Do you ever wish you could take the things you see in your head and put them on film? Well, that concept is called photography. And in the 1960s, one rowdy, boozed up bellhop from Chicago convinced everyone he was able to do it. Or was he? That's what we're looking at today here at the Insomnia Society. Photography was discovered in the early 1900s by a Japanese researcher named Fukurai. While studying a clairvoyant, he noticed images would appear on his photographic plates. The same thing our man Ted Serios would discover too about 60 years later on Polaroid film. He was an unemployed bellhop from the Chicago area and started playing around with hypnosis when he realized he was able to make images appear on Polaroid film. This soon caught the attention of Denver-based psychiatrist Dr. Jewel Eisenbud, and the two began conducting their experiments. Over the years of 1964 to 1967, the two produced more than a thousand viable images. All of these were produced with Polaroid-style cameras, meaning the photos printed straight from the camera and developed in minutes. This made it much harder to fake and ensured that darkroom tricks couldn't have been used to fake them. Some of these photos were what Eisenbud referred to as blackies and whiteies. The blackies were images that were completely unexposed, which was odd because there was nothing stopping the camera from exposing the image. The others were called whiteies. These images were completely overexposed when there was nothing in frame that would have caused the overexposure. Both strange visual anomalies, but these weren't the strangest of Ted's images. He was able to project his thoughts onto the film itself. Over 400 of these images were produced, with one example being of Jewel Eisenbud's ranch. It was a close copy, but the image Ted created depicted the ranch in a state it had never existed in, specifically the area around the barn. Another is of the livery stable in Colorado. The original walls of the building were made of brickwork, but Serios' photo shows it made of pressed stone or concrete. The windows appear more elongated than they were, and they look to be bricked in, which they weren't, and the playbill to the left of the door was never found by Eisenbud or any of the other researchers. Sometimes there were clear misses. This one was taken when Eisenbud was holding the camera. Serios was meant to take a photo of the Chicago Hilton, which was in his hometown, and instead created a photo of the Denver Hilton, which was taken at an obscure angle. So, if the photos are all legitimate, what would cause the distortions and anomalies in the photos? Well, Eisenbud suspected that these distortions and anomalies came from Serios' own unconscious at the time, and were based on the stresses of the conditions that he was working under. To try and prove the skeptics wrong, Ted performed his powers under a wide range of different tests. A lot of these were in front of Denver-based researchers, and they would use marked packs of film marked cameras, sometimes Serios would touch the camera and sometimes he wouldn't, sometimes the images were taken close to the camera and sometimes they were from a length away. He would use clothing provided by the researchers and would be searched, strip searched, and in some cases even cavity searched, even going so far as taking photos in an electrically shielded Faraday cage with the photographer on the outside. Two things that never changed about the production though were the alcohol in Ted's gizmo, both of which were perfect fodder for skeptics. During their experiments, Ted liked to drink, and the longer the experiment went on, the more he drank. Ted was also known to be a bit of a prima donna, so mix these two together and by the end he was putting on a loud, raucous, but also distracting show. He would often run around the room, yell obscenities and take off parts of his clothing, turning more into the obnoxious drunk at the bar than a psychic. Skeptics claim that this could be used to draw the attention of the crowd, but Eisenbud assured them that they were in complete control and keeping a constant eye on Serios. What was the bigger issue for skeptics was Serios' use of a gizmo. 
which was nothing more than a black piece of paper that came in packets of Polaroid film. Serios would roll this up and use it as a device to focus his powers. He sometimes held it to his head, sometimes in front of the camera, and he would wave it around as he performed. The gizmo, like Serios, came under a lot of scrutiny. It was normally inspected before, during, and after the experiment by those involved, and they would normally hold it from him until the experimentation began. At one point, a researcher even put a string through the gizmo and tied it around his neck, so if Serios wanted it, he would need to be pulled up next to him. In 1967, Serios produced his final discernible image, and fittingly enough, it was that of curtains. Also, in 1967, Popular Photography wrote an article breaking down how they believed that he did it. They claimed that he hid a small photographic transparency in the end of the gizmo for the camera to capture. Well, Eisenbud didn't take too kindly to this and quickly refuted the claim with a follow-up article, writing, I hereby state that if before any competent jury of scientific investigators, photographers, and conjurers, any chosen by them can in any normal way or combination of ways duplicate under similar conditions the range of phenomena produced by Ted. I shall 1. Abjure from all further work with Ted. 2. Buy up and publicly burn all available copies of The World of Ted Serios. 3. Take a full page ad in popular photography in order to be represented photographically wearing a dunce cap. And 4. Spend my spare time for the rest of my life selling door-to-door -door subscriptions to this amazing magazine. No time limit is stipulated. James Randi, a man famous for exposing fake psychics and mediums, took up this offer. But he was told that similar conditions to Serios meant being inside a Faraday cage, naked, at a considerable distance from the camera he would never be allowed to touch, as Serios frequently did and would have to get roaring drunk beforehand, as Serios usually was when he worked, to which Randy declined. A man who apparently witnessed a showing in 1966 revealed in a 2002 website what he had seen 36 years prior. Seven guests assembled the evening I was involved, a typical number for a group to witness a demonstration according to Dr. Eisenbud. Each guest was asked to bring at least five rolls of 3,000 speed Polaroid film. Dozens of exposures were made in the two cameras brought by Dr. Eisenbud. Serios would hold what he called a gizmo, a black paper tube about one inch in diameter and one and one half inches long to the camera lens. He would scream obscenities, contort his face, and sometimes yell, now, the signal for whoever was holding the camera to trip the shutter. He became quite drunk and obnoxious. He was often chastised by Dr. Eisenbud, but the doctors still continued to supply beer to Serios. The frenzy continued. The evening wore on. Still no thoughtographs emerged from the multitude of developed images. Then, amazingly, after five long hours, three strange images arrived, after the one minute to process each exposure. Altogether, with the two cameras, he produced six blurry images unrelated to the room's environment. I was puzzled. He often displayed the gizmo so we could see that it was empty, but in his drunken condition, he finally slipped up. Serios became careless. As he was waving his arms and yelling, I saw a shiny object reflect from inside the paper gizmo that he always held to the camera lens. So if this account from 2002 is true, then it would help back up the popular photography article. But, was there anyone ever able to replicate it, even just under normal circumstances? Well, there was two skeptics, named David Eisendrath and Charles Reynolds, and they were able to replicate the effect, which they proved on video. By taking a piece of a transparency, a piece of a photographic transparency, and fastening it across the end, when light passes through the transparency and then through the lens, is picked up by the optical system of the Polaroid camera, and voila, it becomes uh, a photographic image. Charlie is going to hold it. The light from the wink light is going to bounce off of Charlie's shirt and jacket, and 
pass through this lens, through the lens of the camera, and hopefully make a good image on the film. Now, you want to mask off as much of that lens yeah. as you can now. Thing. Yeah, all right. Now, uh, you must realize that when Ted is doing this, a great deal of chaos is taking place. And it's very possible that he could have ditched that, as I just did. Uh, uh, and when they said, let me see this thing, he could say, yeah, I'll look at it, you know. And in the meantime, he's drinking beer, and people are running around, and a great deal is happening. And uh, it's very, very easy, under those circumstances, um, for somebody to do this. You don't even have to be a magician. So was Ted Serios able to create photographs? The evidence is stacked against him, but no one ever did take Eisenbud up on his offer to be naked in a Faraday cage. So I'll let you decide. Sadly, Ted Serios passed away in 2006, but the photos you've been seeing the whole time are now hosted at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County which you can request for access to go visit. Dr. Jewel Eisenbud wrote a book that I mentioned earlier called The World of Ted Serios, which you can read if you want a first-hand account of the experiments. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more. And I look forward to seeing you in the next Insomnia Society episode. Stay safe, guys.